longer do you seek your beauty, your worth, your acceptance? Because this world, you guys, we live in a negative world. It is not our home. Did you know that it takes nine compliments in order to begin the process of healing one insult? One insult immediately changes and conforms your mind to thinking negative things about yourself, negative things about others, and negative things just in general. But it takes nine compliments to invest into that one person so that they can begin to think positively again. Well, living in this negative world, how are we supposed to continue to dwell in joy and whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is noble, whatever is excellent and praiseworthy and admirable, thinking about these things, how can we do that when we're constantly insulted, when we're constantly told that we're not beautiful, we're too fat, we're too skinny, we're too tall, we're too short, we're just not good enough, we won't fit the bill, we're worthless, we're unvalued, we're unloved. How, how do we handle this? Well, I could go about it and spend every second of every day of every week of every month of every year with Chazelle from Enchanted who sees life so positively and so beautifully and so encouragingly. I could spend time with Mickey Mouse who does nothing but encourage people. I could spend time with Tigger who always has confidence in what he's doing, knowing that it's only going to be great because he's going to give it his all in it. I could spend time with them for my whole life. But let's, let's get real. Let's get real. I need to go to the truth. I need to go to what my God says about me. By daily spending time in God's word, every time I hear an insult, every time... Emma, you're not beautiful. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can put my spiritual antennas on. And immediately they go, deceit, deceit. Because I know what the truth is about me. I know what my God says. Psalm 139, you, beloved one, are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together. Your inmost being is fashioned in my delight. I have favor over you. I ordained every day of your life in my book before time ever came to be. My thoughts about you, sweet one, outnumber the grains of sand that covers the grounds of the earth. Psalm 45, 11, God is enthralled by your beauty. He's enthralled by it. Let us honor him for he is our Lord. And God goes on to say in Ecclesiastes 3:11. He has made everything beautiful in its own time. You are, you are beautiful. And not only are you beautiful, but you're beautiful in the place that you are right now. He, he's absolutely in love with you. Romans 5, 8. Even while I was still sinning, even as I sin now, and even as I sin tomorrow, my God loved me so much that he still sent his one and only son to die for me because he wanted to live with me for eternity. And you say that I'm not loved? It's daily spending time in God's word, daily investing into what does my God say? Because we live in a world that is ruled by the kingdom of the air. It is ruled by the enemy. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. So your battle is not against the person telling you that you are unworthy. Your battle is not against the person telling you that your, your smile is not beautiful. Your battle is not against the person that is telling you that you are not enough. Your battle isn't even against the thoughts that you're telling yourself. Your battle is not in that financial situation that tells you that you're not good enough to be, to be the leader of your home. Your battle is not against the sickness that you feel as though you're not strong enough to defeat. It is the enemy that is using these things in the spiritual realm to prevent you from knowing that you are worth all 
things. You were worth Christ coming down and dying to live with you for eternity so that you may know how loved you were. No matter what has been spoken in your life, no matter what has been spoken upon your heart, Christ spoke for you when he died and conquered on the cross. It is finished, period. You are beautiful, period. You are loved, period. It is finished, period. You are more than a conqueror, period. The Lord is your, sh your shepherd. You shall not want, period. If you continue to give yourself fully and first to Christ in your tithings, God will open up the floodgates and pour, pour blessings upon your house, and it will be more than you will ever, ex ever, ever need, period. By his wounds, you are healed, period. Jesus came and conquered any negativity that you are fed at the cross. And he gives us his truth so that you may know that you are worth dying for. So, so that you may know that you are beautiful. So that you may know from Genesis 127, God made you in his image. In his image, he created you. Psalm 512, God has you surrounded in his shield of divine favor. As fear and lack of confidence comes upon you when the ways of the world continuously feed negativity into you, you can take a step back and say, Whoa! I know that this is deceit because I know the truth that my God says about me. I know that he says from Isaiah 41.10 that I don't have to fear for he is my God. That I don't have to be dismayed because he is with me. He is my strength and my help. He will uphold me with his righteous right hand. It's okay that I'm not strong enough because when my strength, when my flesh and my, my strength, it may fail and I become weak. My God, from Psalm 73, 26, he is my strength and my portion forever and ever. You guys, he is with us. And in this time, the enemy is not going to come at you with a big red cape and a pitchfork and horns because he wants to deceive you so that you don't believe and don't truly grasp the truth of how awesome you are. So he's going to come just as close as he can to the light to prevent you from knowing your worth. And it's going to be hard to discern the difference between right and almost right. But Hebrews 4.12 the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, dividing the soul and spirit, cutting into the joints and marrow, judging, judging the attitudes of the heart. Psalm 139, God search me and know me, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, God, and lead me in the way everlasting. 2 Timothy 3.16, the word of God is alive. It's God breathed and has been made profitable for teaching, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. And I'm here to give what our beautiful God says about you to correct what this world has told you is a lie. Because, dear one, in the eyes of the great I am, you are beautiful. It is finished. You are loved unconditionally. No conditions. You are so, so stunning. You are not too fat or too skinny. You are not too tall or too short. Your smile is gorgeous. Your hair is the perfect length, length and color. You are more than a conqueror. You are confident. You are strong. You are significant. You are important. You are valued. But I want to ask you something. Are you spending time with people that daily tell you this? Psalm 1, blessed is the man who does not walk in ways of the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. You are who you hang out with. Jesus, he always spent time with his disciples, with, with, with Jesus-loving people. If I spend time with people who don't love Jesus, then I'm eventually going to become who I spend time with. I'm going to become what they say I am. I'm going to become who they say I am. And I'm going to forget what my God says about me. Who are you spending time with to tell you that tells you how beautiful you are? 
And are you spending time in God's word daily? Are you, are you clothing yourself in the truth of what your great I am says about you? His most prized and precious and beloved son or daughter. Because you are incredible. You are a world changer. But you'll forget it like this if you don't spend time with godly people and daily spend time in his word. You are so incredible. And I pray that this week you know your worth. Because it is finished and you have already been spoken for.